Hi, my name is Graham Fink. I'm a multimedia artist, ad man, photographer, director, designer, and an agent to Sophia, the humanoid robot, but more on her later. And when I went to art school, my foundation course consisted of printmaking, design, filmmaking, sculpture, animation, all these different skills. And at the end of the year, you had to specialise in one thing to go to your next college. But I had a real problem with that. Um, my end of year show, I actually put up a little bit of everything. And my tutor said, here is a guy who doesn't know what he wants to do. And I said, no, 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 I do know what I want to do. I want to do all of it. And they said, well, you can't, you've got to specialise. So I always had a problem with, with, with that. And I was very lucky that um, on the course I, ch I eventually chose graphic design. I had a guy called John Gillard who told us about advertising. And advertising, of course, is all of those skills. So I was very happy to get into that. Now, um, there's a saying, um, you know, don't be a jack of all trades or you're a master of none. Well, actually, the Chinese say um, you, have, you have many knives, but none of them are sharp. And Malcolm Gladwell talks about the 10,000 hour rule where you have to uh, work on this one thing and get really, really good at it. But I, um, I don't agree with this. I think, you know, we can be good at more than, be good at more than one thing, two things, five things. Um, it's just a matter of being, being curious. And um, I found out about this uh, book called um, On the Road, written by this writer, Jack Kerouac. And this is Jack. And he was part of the beat generation. What was interesting about Jack is he used to write this kind of stream of consciousness and on an old fashioned typewriter, instead of a, a sheet of paper like this, he joined a whole bunch of them together. So it was like a long roll. We could keep, keep on typing. Because he was into, into jazz, um, he had a brilliant jazz musician's mind. So he would sort of type the keypad on the typewriter a bit like a, a, a jazz pianist or someone playing the saxophone. And it was because of that timing that he wrote in a completely different way, which I think is, is just brilliant. Amazingly, he wrote all this in just 21 days. It's over 100 foot long and it travels around various museums in the world. It's on the road. But the other thing in interesting about Jack is his many different skills is he was going to be a professional footballer. I mean, he excelled at sport when he was a kid and it was only because he had a horrific injury he had to give it up. And he also spoke two languages. He spoke French until he was 16, then he learned English, the books he's written in English. And then actually he joined the Navy for, for a while um, before he became a writer. So these are the people who really inspire me. I'm calling them the uh, Renaissance pioneers and they use their multi-talents to kind of cross-pollinate to come up with new things. Of course the other great is uh, Leonardo da Vinci who has to be the world's first Renaissance man. He was an inventor, a mathematician, a scientist, uh, an engineer and not a bad artist. Um, he looked into the future and he, he saw things like this. Um, Helicopters, you know, flying machines, a double hole chip, you know, he's inventing armoured cars and, uh, and musical instruments. So they say if the only tool you have is a hammer, then every problem looks like a nail. But uh, Leonardo didn't just have a hammer, he had a veritable toolbox. So another polymath I really admire is, is this lady, Bjork. And um, I've always loved her music. It's, um, awkward, it's, it's, it's different and um, I think she challenges every type of different music convention that there is. And I think she can only do that because of all these different interests that she has. You know, she's an actress, um, she won the Best Actress Award at the Cannes Film Festival in 2000, um, she's a producer, she's a DJ and weirdly enough I found out that she's an active uh, member of a knitting group in, in Reykjavik. Uh, she loved to collaborate with um, all sorts of people in choirs, brass bands, um, her own sound. She's got this strange soprano voice, there's the kind of yells and, and the weird um, noises that she makes. She mixes it all together and she works with people like Michelle Gondry on, on one end and at the other end of the spectrum she's working with people like um, David Attenborough. So th this is kind of real diverse curiosity and every album tends to go off in very sort of different directions 
and she was offered this um, retrospective of her work at uh, Museum of Modern Art in New York and apparently she hesitated before she accepted it and she asked herself this brilliant question. I thought, you know, how do you hang a song on a wall? I thought that was brilliant. She understands the power of the visual, um, evident by her breakthrough videos. So another device she used is this thing called the Tesla coil and what it does, it produces electronic currents between these different devices creating weird sounds and also very theatrically sort of bolts of lightning. Um, and talking of Tesla, uh, I've got to mention this guy, um, Elon Musk. So he had a brilliant uh, understanding of engineering and uh, manufacturing, uh, design, physics and, uh, and theatre. And I, I say theatre because everything he does is pretty dramatic, isn't it? And not all of his stage acts um, necessarily go to plan. I'm talking about the Cybertruck here. But, you know, you don't really care because he, he's just got so many things on the go that he just moves from one project to the other. And, you know, it doesn't matter if something fails. You know, just fail again, fail better. Uh, and I really think he is one of the world's biggest thinkers. You know, he doesn't talk about putting a man on Mars. He talks about putting a whole colony on Mars. And he's building the air filtration system to sustain life up there. So his ideas are off the scale. You know, they're crazy, they're illogical, they're insane. You know, they're not going to work. But somehow he does manage to make them all work. And, you know, he's building cars, he's recycling rockets, he's boring holes, he's riding the Hyperloop, he's building sustainable energy plants. But the one thing, he is scared of AI. I'm not. So I've been working with this lady, um, Sophia, designer built by David Hansen of Hansen Robotics. So last year I was lucky enough to uh, meet Sophia and interview her. And I actually did a, a drawing of my eyes with her. Now, let me talk a little bit about the eye drawing. So this is an idea I had actually all the way since art school. Um, but it was only a few years ago I managed to realize it working with Toby, the world's leaders in eye trackers. And I created a piece of software that allows me to, to draw with my eyes. I know how you do this. It works using two infrared lights and a camera lens. It can detect where you are looking and assign the line to the area of focus. Wow, that's amazing. Well, once I start it, it's one continuous line, so I can't go back, I can't correct any mistakes. But for me, that is part of the, that's part of the process. And so that's what I've been doing, having exhibitions all around the world, doing these drawings with my eyes. People can see it on a big screen, and, uh, and I can draw them looking directly at them. So what I've been talking about is this generalist point of view over specialists. Um, actually, it's mentioned in this book, uh, Range, which is a great book. I'm not knocking specialists, we need them. But all I'm saying is I do think that we should embrace as many, many different things as possible. Try and get as good at many different things as possible. So, stay curious, try new things, experiment, fail, have fun. Mm -hmm.